Hey everyone, I'm Aiden Walls and this is my X-T3 versus X-T4 rundown. So we're gonna break this down into categories and then through each category, I'm gonna tell you what I thought was better on the X-T4, if maybe it's worth just going with the X-T3 in that situation. So here we go. Firstly, build quality. I'm not the sort of YouTube channel that can throw cameras off my roof and dip them in water. So you'll just have to trust my word for it when I say I've taken a look at the X-T4, I've taken a look at the X-T3. The X-T3, firstly, I've been using this for a while now from my local store, Kloppers. And this thing is built like a tank. The nice thing, being a non-IBIS camera, is that, you know, the sensor is secure. Like an IBIS camera, the sensor bounces around and kind of totally freaks me out. This is just solid and built like a tank. That being said, with the X-T3, the X-T4 is more refined and in some ways better built. The one thing that I will say is the flippy screen from Fujifilm, this metal hinge is very robust and I don't think I've ever seen someone break it. I'm sure there are some guys who've broken it. But you know, the, the Canon style flip, flip out screen, I've seen many YouTube videos. Um, okay, maybe it's because Canon's more popular, but I've, I've seen many stories of guys breaking those. I was always very afraid of breaking mine on my Canon. Um, so that's debatable, but I can say that the flippy screen on the X-T4 is beautifully executed and very well made. The X-T4 really does feel solid um, and I think it's, it's really a testament to a great company when in these troubling financial times their cameras are actually getting more robust and better built. Um, and I spoke about this in the previous video um, about the X-T4 just saying how they moved their factory to China and there's a marked difference in quality. I mean, my X-H1 is great, but it doesn't feel as well built as the X-T3, which is made in China, the X-T4, which is made in China. It's quite a big deal. Processing power. Now, this was interesting because I distinctly got the feeling with the X-T4 because it's got quite a few extra video features, a few, well, one extra video codec. I just imagined that it has a more powerful processor. So I went online today and they both have the whatever processor for, a quad processor, and it has the same sensor. So essentially the same nuts and bolts inside and uh, the same power inside. And uh, that's interesting because I think the X-T4 is gonna get more updates and be able to do more which kind of makes me think that they could be doing it with the X-T3 but they aren't because it's older. Anyway, same processing power, you're not losing anything there with the X-T3. IBIS, this, depending on who you are, is a massive, massive game-changing deal, especially if the camera is going to be your only camera, your dedicated camera, IBIS is very, very handy. You can watch my just latest video about IBIS and how I kind of went through a process of thinking IBIS was the worst thing ever because it was training wheels for me and it, and it actually made me very lazy as a photographer and as a videographer. So take that for what it is, but IBIS is very powerful and it's even better on the X-T4 than the IBIS on my X-H1, which I'm talking on now. Picture quality, same. Flip screen, we have to mention the flip screen because for Fujifilm, there's been a lot of backlash from Fujifilm users about the flippy screen. And well, the reason is Fujifilm users are dickheads. Um, but seriously though, Fujifilm have gone the route of the flippy screen and uh, taken a huge risk as their sort of base markets are these sort of die-hard guys. You know, they're like people who couldn't afford a Leica and end up going for something that retro looking like this. And so they're people who love film and they love the old school way of doing things. And to have a flippy screen is almost sacrilegious. So they've gone that route. And there's a lot to be said about the previous system. I really like this. It's a metal hinge, very durable. It does the vertical flip thing. So I really like it, especially for photography. For videography, not so much. Obviously, this thing, being able to pull out and film low down, uh, that's quite handy. But you have to admit, once you start using a flippy screen, I moved from Canon to Fujifilm. I love the screen, but there's a lot about the flippy screen that I miss. And I think the flippy screen is the best compromise. So this is very good for specific reasons. The flippy screen is 
pretty good for many reasons, if that makes any sense. Video options. Now, the Fujifilm X-T4 only really has one extra video codec and it has a more elaborate time code option. But like I mentioned in my previous video, I think the X-T4 is heading for some big updates, one being and I have it on good authority that they're gonna remove the, the record time limit on the X-T4. That's gonna be a huge game changer for a lot of guys who do this kind of thing, recording long periods of time in a studio and weddings and speeches and stuff. It's gonna be a huge deal. So uh, the video options there um, are going to grow, but as it stands right now, there's not a huge difference between the two. And in terms of quality, like I mentioned, same processor, same sensor, um, you're getting very similar video quality and they put HLG in here which I think is a, a huge stride forward and the X-T4 has HLG as well. And then this is a, this is a hardware thing but still sort of on, on the video options side is the memory cards on the X-T4 are hot swappable. So if you're someone who does long conferences or uh, speeches or anything to that, you're at church and you do sermons and your pastor happens to talk for very, very long, um, you can have your memory card set here if they remove the record time limit on the X-T4, you'll be able to switch those cards out while the film is being made. That's pretty cool. Also, a wonderful but not as amazing as I would have thought is the switch between movie and photo. It's, they've replaced the light metering switch here and now you switch between movie and photo. Um, what that means is it immediately switches the entire menu system over to movie. What this is is pandering to first time Fuji users and pandering to reviewers. So people pick up these cameras for the first time and they go, I don't know what's going on because I switched to video and I don't know because all the menus are all like a mess. But as a regular Fujifilm user, it's really not a big deal. What I do is when I'm in a video, I shoot in the T mode and I change my shot over here. When I switch over to video, it retains pretty much all my settings, except I switch my shutter to auto for photography, or I leave it in T, depending on how I wanna shoot my photos. So really, the, the movie photo switch, for someone who's looking to buy and wants to save money on the X-T3, don't let that be a stumbling block for you, because it is nice, it's a nice to have, but it's not a big deal. Better battery, the X-T4 has a better battery. Moving on. <laughs> Well, it is a big deal. For many people, the big battery is a massive deal. For me, if I upgrade to the X-T3, I'm gonna be rigging this out with an external battery anyway, so I really don't care about the big battery. But for people who do long photo shoots, people who, again, do weddings, you won't have to get the battery grip. You can just run and gun with that single battery and buy a couple more and you're good to go for the entire day. Whereas, the X-T3 is gonna be better than my X-H1. If they had done another IBIS camera with this horrific battery, I think there would have been a global outcry because it just is shocking to have a video camera like the X-H1 with IBIS shooting on this atrocious little battery. Anyway, moving on. The X-T4 has 240 frames per second. This is a big deal for anyone that's gonna do heavy slow motion stuff. You know, I, I found a new use for it over the weekend. I was shooting uh, birds and 240 frames per second would have been great. I had the X-T3, doesn't have it. Would have been a great little feature to film those birds doing the high speed, you know, wings flapping and all that. So 240 frames per second, it's one of those things, you won't miss it if it's not there, but when it's there, you're gonna love it. That was a very jazz handsy kind of, you're gonna love it. Uh, minor improvements. So please go watch my other video. I go on and on about this in that video, is that the X-T4, the, the hallmark of the X-T4, it is a near perfect camera. And when they take away the record limits for video, it is, in my opinion, gonna be the most perfect camera we have on the market today. It's got the perfect compromise of, you know, full frame. They've got issues with processing that huge sensor and, you know, dealing with rolling shutter and all that kind of thing. And the APS-C camera is just getting so perfect with Fujifilm. They really have made such a great camera with the X-T4. And the hallmark of that is refinement. So there's just little things on the X-T4 that are better. It's got little buttons here that pull the, the eye cup off. The grip is just a little bit chunkier. The battery lasts longer. That flippy screen, like it or love it, is, is really, really nice. The touch screen of it is really, really good. The resolution is really good. When you flip it closed like this, it's got the same fake leather finish on the plastic here, which just gives it a lovely look. There's so many nice little touches to the X-T4 that just make it just 
a special camera to hold in your hand. Also a little refinement, but something that doesn't really get most people excited is the new um, color profiles. I think there's Classic Neg, I think it's called Classic Neg, and then uh, the Bleach Bypass, the Turner Bleach Bypass. Very niche color profiles, so you're not gonna use it mostly. You're gonna find uh, your favorite color profile for photography, mine is Classic Chrome. Many people it's Provia because it's the standard color profile for, photo for photography. If you shoot in RAW, you're gonna change it anyway later on. And then in video, you're gonna sh either be shooting in Eterna or F-Log or HLG. I don't think you're gonna be bothering too much with color profiles. Um, so who should buy the X-T4 specifically? And why does the X-T3 still have like legs to move in the market. The great thing about Fuji for me as a user is what I do is I, I stay sort of a year or two behind on the technology release cycle. So I got the X-H1 sort of a year in and got it at a bargain. Um, if I get the X-T3 now, it's 10,000 Rand, which is about $800 cheaper than the X-T4. So it's a great budget option right now. I think if you're a first time user, first time you're moving into Fujifilm, you may be moving from full frame, you're a little bit nervous, maybe you're a Canon user and you're used to the flippy screen or just the overall convenience of just the Canon and the interface and all that kind of thing. I think the X-T4 is for you. You know, the, the convenience of the X-T4 switching between movie and photo the whole time makes it much more convenient to use. It's just a lovely camera overall. So if you, if you don't want to hassle, if you want something that's super easy, it's going to be your only camera and you want that IBIS so that it kind of covers you in all situations, by all means, spend the money on the X-T4. But if you're, if you're a budget conscious user, you don't care about the IBIS, then the X-T3 is definitely for you. Also for photographers, you know, there's not much of a difference here, really. The, the, the only thing is IBIS, which is a big deal for many people. I, I'll admit, I miss my X-H1's low light capabilities because I can push the shutter up slightly. It's gonna stay stable and give me a good shot. But overall, you know, you're not missing much. Um, I'd say just stick with an X-T3 and save all that money as a photographer. But at the end of the day, right now, as it stands, if you wanna get a really, really good bargain, this is on a cashback deal right now. So the X-T3 is on a cashback deal right now. And if you call now, <laughs> this isn't an advert, but I really think if you are going for sort of the deal of 2020, the X-T3 is the deal of 2020. So that's my comparison of the X-T4 and the X-T3. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Which one are you gonna buy? I'll see you in the next video.